All righty then, with apologies to Jim Carrey. You've just sent this lovely photo, and this is the same one we used in the last lesson. That's 26 underscore 2508094.pst. You've just sent it off to your client. You've been working back and forth on your monitor, checking it out. He likes it. You did the print. You're just waiting for the check. The phone rings. You check the caller ID. It's your client. You're ready to hear that. Here's your money. And he calls up and says, well, you know what? It didn't look that way when I was watching it on your monitor. Well, duh to that. It is practically impossible to show on a monitor a subtractive CMYK image in an RGB world. Now, we live in an additive world for color. That's red, green, and blue. And the colors you see on your monitor are being projected out at you like a neon sign. Subtractive color is the opposite. It's on the other side of the galaxy, and it's cyan magenta in yellow. Lights have to hit something and bounce off to get to your eyes. Big difference there. So how do we get this thing to look as much as possible like it would on paper, even though we're not going to get exact, can we get close? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. Let's go up to the word view on the pull-down menu and go down to Proof Colors right here. Now, you should have that on. So we have Proof Colors on. We go back up to the word View, and then we go into Proof Setup. Now, since I am working on, and you are too if you're using the same image, a CMYK image, we are working in the Working CMYK Color area. So what you're seeing on the screen right now should be pretty close to what it's going to look like when it prints. However, what if we're working in a different area? Now, you've got Legacy Macintosh RGB Gamma 1.8. Now, watch the image. I know it's covered, but keep an eye on that when I change it. You see it change? It got lighter. Legacy 1.8 Gamma on an RGB monitor for Macintoshes were always a little bit lighter than Windows. And that's kind of coming together now. We've got less of that problem, if you will. But we can see there is a change. So if we're going out to a monitor, one way to check it out would be to check proof colors out for things like legacy. You've got internet standard, which I like. See how it got darker? This is basically what it would look like, more or less, if you were taking it out to the internet. Now, the idea here is if it's too dark, it's too light, or you don't like things, you now have the opportunity to shift it, color correct it, do the things that you need to make it work. Let's go back up here again. In Photoshop 5, they came up with two features that help with people who are colorblind. Please don't ask me to pronounce these names over here, but this one deals with people that have an adversity toward red, and this one is toward green. Now, if I click that, you'll notice it did change. And if I go back up again and go into the green one, it changed again. What we're trying to do, I suppose, is just try to be everything to everyone. We're trying to make the image as good as possible. Remember, though, this is called a soft proof. There's nothing that's changed yet. We're just observing what we think it should be. Now, let me show you this. Let's go back up to View and go into Setup and go back to Working CMYK. So theoretically, this is what it would look like very closely if we ran it on a four-color press and the planets were aligned and everything is perfect, it should look pretty much like this. But the problem is there are colors in here that might be what is defined as out of gamut. Now, what gamut is, is the range of a press, the range of the colors in CMY as opposed to RGB. We are looking at this almost like looking at a neon sign. It's projecting at us. CMYK cannot produce the saturation and that livid vibrancy of the colors on a piece of paper. So we want to see what colors in this image are not really going to make it over into CMYK. And so we go up to the word view and we go down to gamut warning. Now remember, you want proof set up at CMYK. If we go in here, look at all those areas that turned gray. Let me undo that. And you can see they're turning gray. What is that? Those are the areas that the computer is saying are not going to make it into the world of CMYK. And you go, oh, man, that's a lot of stuff. It's going to ruin the image. We're not saying, or Photoshop's not saying, that it's going to be horrible. 
it just can't quite achieve that level of vibrancy. So what do you do? Well, we could do a couple of things. Understand the primary reason the colors aren't coming over is because of their vibrant nature, not because of the color itself. So there are a couple of tricks here. Let's do this first. Let's go ahead and put these two together. I'm going to press Control E, select the top one, and that makes it one image. That's going to be easier for us to work here. And we still got the gray down here. One way to do this is to reduce the overall saturation of the image. So we could go in here to our half moon icon and we could go into something like U and saturation. I'm not suggesting this would be the best way, but it is the one that will really quickly show you how this operates. If I go to saturation right here, watch these gray areas right here. They begin going away. Now I can keep doing this until they all go away, which means all the colors in the image now fall within the gamut or range of a four color press. The problem with that is, if we look at the image now by turning that on or off, is we're reducing the color saturation of the inks across the board. Let me turn this off so you can see that a little bit better. You say, well, I'm not willing to do that. Here's a trick for you. Let's get rid of you and saturation as an adjustment layer. What we're going to do is we are going to go up to the word select on the pull down menu and go into color range. One of the options in sampling my colors, besides the new one, which is skin tones, is out of gamut. And when I select that, there's all those areas again, and I click OK. That creates a selection of those areas and just those areas. Now, let's go into U and saturation. we have a mask, and the mask will only change the areas that are in white. If we come back out again, and let's go into our view for gamma warning, come back into the area for you and saturation, and we will lower those areas until they basically go away, say like that, collapse this down, let's go ahead and turn off gamma, we don't need it anymore. And if I turn this on and off, you'll see, although some of those areas have lost that vibrancy, the majority of the image still retains that really good color that we like. So when we're working with soft proofs, we can really get a good idea of what it's going to be before it grows up to be a print. And we can also play around with that gamut warning, check out the areas that won't make it to four color, and use select color range to pull those colors into a gamut for a four color press. On to the next.